If you were a young child forced to eat other humans in order to survive, what would you do? In old feudal Japan, a lack of food and resources has caused the country to go into complete and utter disaster, with a terrifying lord hunting down your every move. I'm here to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the calamity in Asura. This country is about to go through a devastating natural disaster, overseeing a burning city full of screaming citizens. This Buddhist monk comments on how bad karma has brought the downfall of this city, calling the destruction a result of their own ignorance. Some time later, this pregnant lady walks through a blistering hot desert, complaining of pain inside of her. She takes shelter in this temple while screaming in agony, realizing that she's about to give birth. The lady takes her clothes off and quickly ejects the baby from her body taking a moment to breathe before noticing someone coming inside. She grabs her baby and an axe from the ground. While finding this dog rushing straight towards her, the lady manages to defend them from the creature and smiles, knowing that her baby is now safe. Years pass by, and the mother looks for food to feed her young child. She stumbles across this human skeleton. She's so hungry, and she decides to take a bite of some of the meat. Not caring whether it's human or animal, there's no more food in this country, and the mother is slowly being driven crazy. Later, the baby climbs up on her body, and she continues to think about food. So, she throws her baby into a pit of fire and burns the child alive. And that's when it begins to rain heavily, and the lady realizes what she's done, scarring her own son for life without even knowing that she's just created a cannibalistic monster. She's so damn hungry that even her own son is starting to look like a snack. Eight years later, the child, Asura, aimlessly wanders the scorched lands full of nothing but dead crops and extreme heat. This family hides away in a darkened house while sharing their last bit of food. The mother mentions that a drought has taken away all of their crops when out of nowhere, Asura sneaks in and slaughters all of them, eating the entire family and satisfying his hunger. This older man walks in to find the entire place massacred and announces that people have been killed. That evening, it begins to rain heavily, and the villagers rejoice, finally seeing water after a long, long dry season. Asura here sits below the bridge, looking extremely depressed before noticing that there's a lone human walking above on the bridge. His hunger strikes again, and Asura rushes up to kill the man and stands face to face with him as he walks past by him. Readying his axe, he goes for a killing blow. He takes a swipe at the Buddhist monk, but he's too damn quick, jumping and avoiding the young child's attacks. All the while, he continues to perform a mysterious prayer while stepping on Asura's blade, confronting him on being a flesh-loving cannibal. And that's when he realizes that Asura can't talk and lets go of his axe. The young child recovers and lunges forward to bite him, while the monk urges him to try his luck, but notices a strange power coming out of Asura. Avoiding the attack yet again, he throws the child onto a nearby tree and easily knocks him out. Okay, so we got a young kid with an axe and an old man. You definitely would think that this kid should have been easily able to take out an old man, but it looks like he has a few tricks up his sleeve. Now, this is an innocent old guy, which should mean he'll be an easy target for the bloodthirsty Asura here. But there is something different about him than the other prey that this kid has been taking advantage of. Must be his lifetime of training as a freaking Buddhist monk, because damn, this guy is strong. If I was Asura, I wouldn't blame myself for thinking that this guy was going to be easy to make my next meal. Because after all, I would be an 8 year old child. And the Buddhist monk is an old man, but it's very easy to see that this old man is stronger than your average Joe and would prevail in a physical fight. Asura might be wielding a pretty big damn axe, but there's no telling at the time if this monk is armed as well. And considering that he's alone, there's a good chance that he could be hiding a deadly blade in order to protect himself, or he's that confident that he can handle anything that comes his way. Either way, taking this man head on is a bad idea. Asura, my child, you really messed up by losing the element of surprise. The moment you jumped into the air and landed on that bridge and tried to take a swipe at the monk, you literally just revealed yourself. You should have stayed hidden. Lunging out and attacking like you did, Asura, you gave yourself absolutely zero chance of success. And yes, even tiptoeing behind him quietly might have been a bad idea. The bridge is extremely rickety, and our only chance of a good hit would be if his 
his old ears are too shot to hear anything. However, there is something else that we could do to take him out if we really wanted him dead. Asura here is already perched under the bridge that doesn't look to be built all that well. The river is moving at a pretty strong pace, and it's probably been there for years, which means that it's already a frail structure and would be more susceptible to breaking. If Asura were to slash the structures below, he could loosen the entire bridge for this innocent old man to fall over and send him flying down into the river because obviously he's hungry and he needs to eat. He might be fast enough to follow the old man and see where the body ends up and then have a nice hearty nutritious meal of human flesh. Later, Asura wakes up in a hidden cave. Realizing that he's being taken care of by the old Buddhist monk, Asura gets up to attack him again. My, you're a persistent little child. And the old man questions why everyone is an enemy to him and offers up a bowl of food while insisting that he won't attack. The child tries to get his first bowl, but the old man denies him, demanding that he spits back the same prayer that he was babbling on about during their fight the entire time. The kid takes a moment, but manages to barely say the prayer that the old man was reciting during their fight. The old man backs off and the child devours his first bowl of real food in years. And the old man takes pity on Asura, realizing that he kills to protect himself and to feed, and pours the boy another bowl of food. He lectures Asura, telling the boy that humans are beings that help each other out. Asura runs back farther into the cave. This old man knows that he needs to help the kid out, officially announcing to us all that he's the main character. Speaking to himself, he knows that Asura will return to his human form if he keeps reciting the chant after enough time has passed. Outside, this child slave, Saoru, falls over while transporting a massive log and gets poked at by his boss, who declares him too weak for work, ordering him to be dropped into the valley. This new world is a terrible place, and even innocent children aren't safe. The older slave insists that they give him some food and is told to deliver him before sunset. But out of nowhere, Asura comes rushing down to eat the slave and is kicked away before he can have a bite. That's when a vulture flies towards Saoru and they watch Asura here take a bite out of the animal and forces it to fly off. The older one insists that they give him some food. He looks at their friend, while the older one offers up the last of their remaining food, throwing it away as Asura runs off to feed. Later, the indentured servant watches Asura trailing behind them and question if he's still looking for food, but then they're approached by a gang who demand that they leave the premises. The older one begs them to allow the group to go through, insisting that they won't be given food if they don't transport this massive log. The gang insists that they don't give a and throw rocks towards them. And the leader throws one final rock, but that was his biggest mistake. Okay, 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 hold up. This is a massive issue that's about to get a whole lot worse. First of all, what was the older kid thinking about entering a rival territory? Did he really think that transporting a log was good enough of a reason for them to let them all pass through? If I was him, I would have tried to strike a deal with the gang if possible. It may have been useful to try and persuade them to let us through by offering to give up a slice of the food that we'll be rewarded with after the job is done. Also, once the first person threw a rock at the kid's head, I think that was a good sign that we might want to turn back. There's no point sticking around when this evil gang is blocking our only pathway to finish our delivery. However, with the crazy cannibal kid Asura on our side, at least for the moment, it seems like there's a good chance that we could just kill all of them and hide their dead bodies somewhere. The people standing in front of us have nothing but rocks to hurt us with, and we happen to have an absolute supernatural half-human cannibal beast here to help us out. Just take a look at them. There's like, what, six infants trying to stare us down? Come on. It's gonna take a lot more than that to stop us. Not not only that, Asura here will be pretty damn full by the time he's done with them. I'm sure you wouldn't be opposed to killing these guys either. They don't look like the most imposing group of people, and we can easily take them on. We just need to be fast enough with delivering the log and avoid being caught as cold-blooded killers, meaning we can successfully complete our mission, get the food, and live to fight another day, and also keep our cannibal beast fed. The rock lands right on Asura's forehead and creates a massive gash above his head. Suddenly, he jumps on the hill and propels himself towards the leader's neck, killing him where he stands. And that's when they realize that this is the landlord's son, and Asura has just badly messed up. His father and Lord Jito arrive on the scene, and they see that his own son is dead, demanding to know who the hell did this. A gang member points towards the bloodied killer, 
Asura, and he's quickly chased through the fields by the Lord, and everyone watches what is surely to be a death sentence. Asura manages to avoid being caught and hides on top of this boiling hot cliff face as the father follows. Looking up, he hears a scream from the side, being spotted by the father. He races down to kill Asura, but the man is savagely bitten on the neck. Hmm, that seems to be a favorite for you, Asura. He pushes Asura off of him and lunges forward with his blade, urging the kid to take him on one more time, swiping at Asura. He misses every single killing blow, but that's when the kid slips on a loose part of the cliff and is sent spiraling down into the valley. This drop is very well fatal, and Asura seriously messed up trying to fight with Jito. Later, the older servants group questions whether or not Asura was killed, suggesting that no one has survived a duel with the notorious landlord. However, this little cannibal is one of a kind. He wakes up badly injured in a massive pile of dead bodies, which I'm sure he doesn't mind must have been like a buffet for him. Asura finds this lizard crawling around and eats it whole instead of the pile of dead bodies. Hmm, interesting and also ends up tussling with a vulture before falling down even further. He manages to find an opening which leads him outside and leaves a stream of blood floating down the river valley as a young maiden sees the disturbing sight. She finds Asura unconscious and runs over to help, taking the kid in and holding him in her arms. He wakes up screaming as the girl applies a burning hot stick onto his leg to stop the bleeding, assuring him that it'll all be over soon. Later, the lady applauds Asura for sticking through the pain and rewards him with a plate of food. Seeing this, Asura mutters his name before grabbing it with his mouth and climbs the wooden beam. The woman named Wakasa agrees to call him by his chosen name, walking outside to take care of chores. This is the second time that Asura has defied the odds and found someone nice enough to deal with his cannibalistic uh, tendencies. Okay, this is the perfect opportunity to pull off something absolutely terrible that the Buddhist monk would definitely not approve of. This pretty lady Wakasa has taken Asura in out of the the kindness of her heart. And if we think selfishly in this country that is full of ruin, then maybe it's for the best that we take advantage of this kindness. Assuming that this is her home and she has a good healthy food in her kitchen, then this would be a great place to take shelter in for however long Asra here wants to. The only catch is that we do have to eventually kill Wakasa. You might be thinking, why? Why would we have to do that? But my good weebs, in the long run, Having two people sharing food means less food for us. Or more exactly, less food for Asura here. He is a growing boy and needs all the nutrition that he could get. Now, yes, it could backfire. Her family might be wondering where the hell she might have gone off to if Wakasa has been gone for a few too many days. But you know what that means, right? More people coming his way, which means more human flesh for Asura to feed on. It's a win-win. It is also very messed up, but still a win-win to survive. A little while later, she comes back and sees the kid hiding away while clutching an empty plate. He begins to recite the Buddhist monk's chant, which shocks Wakasa, questioning how he knows this ancient phrase. Seasons later, the two become acquainted with Wakasa teaching the kid more verbal words and slowly making him more human-like. She works at the fields and overhears the concerns about the rice quality this season, while Asura continues to peek at her in secret. Later, Wakasa finds him fast asleep and decides to carry him home, insisting that he stop working so damn hard. She hides away from bypassing villagers and drops him off behind this tree while she finishes off work for the day. Wakasa finds him hiding away again, and he looks at her with a big smile. They lie down together and stare at the sunset, with him complimenting Wakasa's choice of location, stating that this is the safest place to hide. Later, she takes a bath in the river, while Asura kind of mm, creepily watches and is probably the best day of his immature life, but it is really awkward? Yeah, moving on. Wakasa explains of a city beyond the mountains where she wants to go with her lover. However, though, she doesn't realize that she's never going to make it there alive. Hearing the news of this city and her lover, Asura gives off a grumpy vibe. Maybe he's jealous. Asura leaves to go catch a butterfly, and he looks off into the distance, wondering more about this mysterious city. That night, Wakasa notices something outside of her home. She rushes to go check up on Asura, wondering what the hell he's doing. That's when the kid walks off and realizes that their little friendship is over. During the next workday, she speaks with her colleagues about potential romantic interests, looking back to find Asura creepily staring at her again, and he begins to follow another group of indentured servitudes, carrying more logs and hides behind this tree to avoid being spotted. Sleeping at home, he wakes up to see a bunch of food being delivered and watches as Wakasa runs out of the house. Asura hunts down some local fish 
in the valley, watching his guardian collect food from the forest. She notices Asura standing behind her and tells him that she's collecting mushrooms for tonight's dinner. However, though, Asura doesn't seem like he gives a sh he walks closer to the lady and jumps at her with evil intent, scaring Wakasa, who insists that he puts the weapon down. She reminds him that he killed Kotaro, the gang leader, and risked his own life in the process. Wakasa insists that he needs to live a better life and stop the killing. She hugs the kid and later cooks him food to eat, calming once again the ravenous cannibal, informing him that she's going to head home now and leaves him food for the night. Asra walks out to see her meeting with a mysterious man, and now he's really getting jealous. That evening, he walks out of his shelter to see where Rakasa runs off to. Perching himself onto a tree, he spots the lady coming back to see him. The kid walks in extremely disappointed, entering his place and finding it empty. Wakasa runs through the heavy rain to meet with her lover boy and they share a kiss in his, uh, hay crib, while Asura stands outside wondering where the hell she went to. After some alone time, Wakasa admits that she wants to stay with him forever, and her lover boy promises that he'll find a way to leave this small village and take her along with him to the big city. She strongly agrees with this idea and begs him to never ever leave her alone. She's absolutely in love with this man, but there's about to be a bit of a wrench thrown into the works of her relationship. Asura opens up the man's house with an axe and rushes towards Loverboy, slicing his shoulder open. Wakasa rushes over to help him, demanding to know why Asura has done this. He throws his into the ground over and over, with Wakasa cursing the kid and calling him a demon. She orders him to leave, breaking Asura's very confused heart, forcing him to go back out into the wilderness. Now he's just lost his only friend. Asura continues to remember being called a demon, and he depressingly walks through the raining, drizzly forest. Finding eventually a place to stay while stewing in anger, he screams hard enough to cause a natural disaster with water raging through the landscape, taking out everything along with it. Later, the monk takes a look over the destruction that's occurred and continues to pray for those who once lived there. Meanwhile, Asura spots a monkey family jumping from the tree above and swinging his axe. He chases down the scared animal and it fights back, forcing both of them to tumble downhill, and Asura lets out all of his emotions along with the monkey. Okay, this is one of the more messed up animes I have ever seen. Asura losing his only friend has just caused a natural disaster to occur. <laughs> that is terrifying. He obviously needs to uh, go to therapy and control his emotions a little bit more and use his energies towards something better, like dang. How the heck did his scream manage to cause a current strong enough to take out multiple houses and essentially cause a natural disaster? That is scary. Asura, my man, you should not get too attached to a girl, especially one that already has a boyfriend. I think you should maybe probably cut your losses and let this one go. First off, she's way too old for you. Considering that Asura, you are only 8 years old, if I were him, I would probably go back to the Buddhist monk and have me take him under his wing. He seems like a pretty well put together old guy who could show us the ways of living as a human far better than Wakasa ever could. Hell, his bowl of hearty soups looks way better than the food that Wakasa cooked for Asura. That's when the Buddhist monk returns, surprised by how human he's become. Uh-huh, he's fighting a monkey. Definite progress. Asura refuses to believe that he's but a beast, and the monk orders him to recite these chants if he wants to become human. Asura calls these humans savages who eat each other without any remorse, and he gets angry enough to swing at the monk being thrown off, and he scolds him for what he's done. The monk insists that he's different from other beasts, that he has a heart which sets him apart and gives him human emotions like suffering. Asura assures him that he's only a beast, but the monk questions why, taking his axe away and placing his arm onto the ground, offering it up to Buddha. He hands him the amputated arm over to him, asking him to eat it and call his bluff, and show that he is indeed human. Freaked out, Asura runs off while the monk sheds a tear. Uh, I would too, but my arm is gone. Wakasa takes a look at this season's crops, finding it completely dried out. She continues working indoors when suddenly, she overhears a man approach her father about selling his own daughter for a very high price, and is ordered by her dad to go away. That night, Wakasa and her lover boy meet again, with the man handing her a small portion of food, explaining that the Lord has been limiting food supplies where he lives. Meanwhile outside, this delivery man is confronted by a deadly gang who kill him without hesitation. Wakasa visits this man to ask for any spare food and is rejected by everyone, she asks. Her and lover boy sit in his room, starving from the lack of food, while wondering when they will eat next. Meanwhile though, this group of workers have an argument that turns physical. Lover boy finds a starved Wakasa inside her home and runs to 
steal some food from his group. They spot him pulling a fast one and force him to admit that it's for his girlfriend. And they can't believe that he's selfishly taking food while he begs for just a small amount. And he gets beaten up for his troubles. Okay, lover boy, my good man, you were a very Sigma male right there. You went through all of that just to help out your sickly girlfriend. Well done. <laughs> I don't care. What you did to get food isn't something a leader should do. You took what wasn't yours and paid the price. Now here's why he messed up. Wakasa is already on the verge of death from lack of food, as you can tell. And it takes anywhere from 43 to 70 days they're about to die from starvation, depending on factors like age, sex, overall body composition. And Wakasa seems like a pretty damn active girl considering that she's always out looking for food herself. She might be able to outlast the scorching heat and lack of food for a little bit longer. However, with such a restricted diet, in fact a diet that consists of, well, no food at all, is really bad for the human body. Going weeks or months without food can reduce a person's lifespan significantly. Meaning Loverboy's girl might not live long enough even if God opens up the clouds and drops down an all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue right in front of her. She might not live long anyways. Don't take from your own group of hoodlums. Find some other group to steal from. You ever think of that? Loverboy did a terrible thing by stealing from his own team. And now he's all on his own. Serves him right. Well, it would be great to have all the food that we want and take it from anybody. Doing that in a country filled with despair like this one is not a good idea. And this is one of the rare times why I will say teamwork makes the dream work. Wakasa here walks out in the scorching heat looking for wildlife, spotting a tiny lizard which she feverishly chases and falls over, not realizing that Asura is following her every step. He tries to steal a horse from the landlord's home and gets caught and runs out of the massive house and revealing that he's still alive to Lord Jito and orders everyone in the village to hunt him down. Meanwhile, Wakasa speaks with her father who suggests that selling off his daughter might actually be a good idea and asks for her opinion. She looks away in agony at the thought and her father pleads for a way to get more food. That's when Jito's messengers barges in and informs him that the Lord has ordered everybody to gather. Her dad listens to announcement ordering them to find Asura, the cannibal child, and kill him. And the prize? One year worth of rice to the one who gets him. The starved villagers now have a very, very powerful motivator, and they celebrate and are now set out to finding the child cannibal. Wakasa overhears the announcement and the reward, when suddenly her father opens the door and Asura appears stalking down the lady. He smiles and places down a bowl of fresh meat, making Wakasa salivate in hunger. She tightly grabs it before dropping the gift and knows that he killed more people for it. He bluffs and tells her that it's just horse meat, but Wakasa knows that that is actually human meat. Also starving, her father doesn't care out of crazed hunger and heads straight for it with Asura cutting him a slice. Wakasa slaps the meat out of his hand and is shocked by what disgusting sh** is going on. Okay folks, I will admit this is an absolutely horrifying position to be in. But Asura could have handled this a little bit better if he wanted to be caretaker and have everybody survive. Wakasa here looks like she's on the brink of death without being fed in what probably feels like years. Giving her some form of food is definitely a step in the right direction. But Wakasa is way too pure and is way too good to take a bite of her own species. If I was Asura, I would maybe think that through and realize that there are, well, two options for her to survive. Wakasa's old man mentioned that Asura's capture would give them a year's worth of rice. He was walking close enough to their home to hear this before the father opened the door to look for him. This would be a huge sacrifice and the end of, well, his life. But if Asura really wanted her to live, he could have offered up himself to let Wakasa survive. A year of rice would have meant that her and her family would be smooth sailing for the harsh season ahead and probably help them out of tough times until society recovers from whatever disaster this kid seems to have brought down on them. Or we could make a deal with the father to keep us in hiding for a continued supply of human meat. The father didn't seem to bat an eye when Asura here showed up with the goods, meaning that at least he's clearly thought things through and doesn't care and is desperate enough to make a deal with us. The child killer can keep collecting human meat for them to eat and wait out some resurgence of resources in relation to livestock, crops, and all that good stuff. While Wakasa might be absolutely disgusted, too bad girl, you want to live? Eating the meat of your own species isn't the most horrible idea when there's literally nothing else to eat. It's never good, my good weeps, to advise for cannibalism, but apart from the fact that it's extremely easy to catch diseases from eating your own kind, such as a terrifying one called Kuru, which basically results in mutated proteins caused by eating other humans, causing a complete shutdown of the body with the brain literally forming holes due to the loss of brain matter. Ooh. <laughs> 
that's gross. That being said, it's still a way to keep the hunger away and avoid death from starvation. Yes, you will have holes in your brain, but at least you'll be sort of still there and not dead. Now, while it is a stretch to believe that this family is down for such an idea, it could be worth a try. She warns her dad that eating humans will send them straight to hell. Osiris says that it's necessary and offers up the last piece to Wakasa, insisting that she eat it or die from extreme starvation. So, she refuses to eat it and accepts death over cannibalism. Asura tells her to cheer up and the lady breaks down, wondering what happened to this once lovable kid. He walks in closer and insists that it's horse meat one more time. But Wakasa knows that he's lying. The kid screams out as the other villagers spot his location and are ready to kill him. Asura tries to force feed the human meat while she uncomfortably moves away and collapses from exhaustion. Wakasa explains that if she eats the meat, she will never be able to live with the guilt that comes with it. Asura begs her to take up his offer and knows that she could die from starvation at any time, wanting her to stay alive by any means necessary. The lady begins to understand, but begs him to stay inside. That's when he runs into hundreds of armed men who are out for blood. Asura runs through a horde of attackers while avoiding their every swing, and makes his way over to G where they cross swords. Asura runs off and the angered villagers follow him with no reason other than to brutally kill him and claim their prize. They look around the swamp with no idea of where he went and then get ambushed and slaughtered and they drop their torches onto the flammable grass. Asura continues to get chased down by Chito and his men, using wits to escape and hide and they spot him climbing down the mountain and send flaming arrows flying towards his direction. He runs off until Jito here tracks him down again and takes multiple swings at him, causing Asura to fall over in the long grass. Jito stabs through multiple times, wondering where the small kid went. It's absolutely terrifying, and this lord isn't gonna let Asura go without skinning him alive. Okay, we're in a dicey situation. Our arch nemesis, Jito, has us cornered, and it's probably for good reason. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Asura, you did take a bite out of his son, so there's that. Asura here has absolutely lost it by trying to force feed Wakasa human meat. Now, her opinion on us has changed forever, and he's never going to achieve his dream of having a, uh, well, relationship with this pretty girl. Either way, though, that's not the point. Asura here is about to be brutally killed, and here's what we can do. If I were Jito, I for one would have stopped this whole craze before it even began. Asura already knows that there's dozens of armed men waiting for us outside. And it's pretty much a death sentence walking outside. Hell, this is an eight-year-old kid taking on a massive horde of very hangry, hardened men. It's simply impossible even regarding his impressive athletic abilities. Like, for example, jumping ten freaking feet in the air. So we need to use brain over brawn when dealing with this incoming horde. This is going to require giving Wakasa a brutal death. I'm sorry, girl, but you gotta go at this point. I'm very sorry, you're a nice lady, but Asra could be able to convince these mindless soldiers into walking straight into her home. The place is made of a lot of flammable materials, and there are a lot of people holding a lot of flaming torches that could cause some trouble. If I were Asra, I would stay inside the house until they lose patience and decide to check for me inside. Once we've gathered enough people's interest inside of the house, we can attack someone holding a torch next to the wooden beam and escape from there. With the chaos of everything happening inside and everyone stuck, we will be able to set this house on fire, and Asuro then will have a lot of less people to worry about, so then he can either run off forever or go confront Jito in peace. Suddenly, Asura jumps at him from behind and latches onto Jito's neck, sending him tumbling off of his horse. The two have their final showdown, but that's when Jito's head explodes in a bloody mess, and Asura hears the villagers coming after him. He limps away from the danger and is surrounded in every direction with nowhere to go. Asura finds this rickety wooden bridge and runs across it, dangling from a thread. As the villagers catch up to him, he climbs his way back up and realizes that he's screwed. There are hundreds of people out here to kill him from both sides of the bridge, burning it and leaving him with no option but to sprint his way across. However though, it's too late. The burning bridge collapses and sends him flying back down into the valley and the villagers celebrate finally killing this child menace. Some time later, the snow has arrived on the lands, leaving a now single lover boy and his group even more depressed than before. They transport a dead body, while Asura here slowly walks past them, realizing that this dead body is Wakasa. She never succumbed to eating the human meat and died because of it. Now isn't that a sad ending?